Welcome to the Cloudless Mind podcast about neuroscience, non-duality, and change management. Introducing your host, Paul Smith. Welcome to the Cloudless Mind podcast with a very special guest, a good friend of mine, uh, Aitya Zapora. Beautiful Hi. name. Thank Hi, you. Aitya. Hi. What she has studied is quite incredible. She's a neuroscientist. She graduated in business management and she's That's a right. cognitive psychologist. Yes a self-realization coach, and she has a black belt in Lean and Six Sigma. That's right. <laughs> and she's only 44 <laughs> years old. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Welcome, Aitya. Thank you. Uh, you were one of the first uh, people that uh, popped up in my mind uh, thinking about who I could uh, do podcasts with. Oh, nice. Thank you. Can you tell us something about your study as a neuroscientist? Because uh, creativity is one of your main topics, right? That's true. Um, what I was interested in is also when I was studying uh, business management is changing um, of organizations. And that's also about changing the behavior of people. So what I wanted to know is how do you change behavior of people and behavior of yourself? Yes. So I thought, well, I need to study psychology to understand the brain a little bit more. So what I did is after I studied psychology, I wanted to also... Um, uh, research my questions and to find out well, you know, uh, the answers to what I'm curious about. So in neuroscience, I wanted to know um, about the unconscious processes that take place before you can see it in behavior. Yes. So that was my um, that was my main focus. So I m my thesis was about creativity. And also because creativity is mostly, well, 90% um, executed by your unconscious. Yeah. And also different um, unconscious problem-solving strategies of your mind. So what kind of uh, tactics and strategies can your unconscious have and how can you influence them by uh, doing different activities? Okay, great. I'm in businesses a lot. And what I noticed, if uh, companies, they want... To, uh, to come up with creative ideas, they start yes. to do brainstorm sessions. Yes. What's your idea about that? Well, <laughs> brainstorms was, I want to say it's so 2002. But <laughs> <laughs> but, it is. Um, brainstorms, if done right, can lead to uh, generating of new ideas. But that's not the best way to come up to ideas. But Because what you do is, in a brainstorm session, you really define... Um, you know, where you're going to be, a location and a time spot, and you come inside into a room and, and you ask people at that moment to focus to get new ideas. And yeah. what you ac actually should never do um, for somebody to come up with new ideas and unique ideas is to focus because that really uh, damages <laughs> the state of your brain to come up with new ideas. Yeah, because I think the misconception is that people think when I want to be creative, I have to start thinking. Yes. And the more you <laughs> focus and the harder you try to come up with an idea. Well, I think that's what they call a writer's block. <laughs> that's true. You bring yourself to a writer's block by trying too hard, actually. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, there are many misconceptions about creativity, one of them being um, that there are some creative people in the world. Now, they are creative and there are people who just don't have it. Well, that is a big misconception because creativity depends on what you do, actually. Okay. okay. Um, it's also important how you define creativity. It's actually using old knowledge and yes. combining it in new ways and seeing new connections. Now, new connections... Um, between old knowledge mm -hmm. requires a state in which you are relaxed so you can see everything around you. Now imagine that you are really busy in your head and you go outside and you're running and, and you are thinking of many things. Let's yes. say your mind is very noisy. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to observe what's around you imagine you're running yes and you i mean you, you don't really notice even the trees or maybe maybe the buildings around you but if you are calm in your head and you're relaxed and you feel good and laid back what you do is you even hear the chirping of a bird far away so it's just like that in your brain if it's very noisy uh, you don't see even the knowledge that you have, you don't notice, let alone the connections in between. Yes. So what you want to do is you want to relax so that you can see and reach the knowledge that you have and let it show you the connections so that you can come up with uh, new ideas. 
Yes, that's why we say uh, a cloudless mind is the first step. Yes. Because uh, then there's actually space for something to pop up. Exactly. Let's look closer to what happens when you think about, when you say something like, I came up with a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you sit down and, um, well, physically, you sit down on a chair and you think, okay, um, I need to think. So you start thinking. And then you come up with an idea is what the outer world sees, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what you say. But what happens is, what are you really thinking about? Are you thinking about an idea? No. No, no. No, I mean, I don't go and open a drawer of a, or a closet and look at all the uh, folders of new ideas and choose one and then say, I came up with an idea. No, what happens is, what you're th really thinking about is the question. Yes. And you're thinking about the problem that needs to be solved. And you're thinking about your old knowledge, what you already know. Yeah. And what happens really in your mind is that all of a sudden you notice a new idea. So a new idea comes in your mind. You yes. don't find it. So it's so, the, the unconscious part of the brain that actually gives you a present exactly. that pops up in your awareness. The only thing that you do is to receive it. Yes. Now, receiving something has to also... Yeah, to do with being able to hear everything and know everything and see everything in that moment. So if you are in a state in which you can um, uh, receive that and recognize that as it is, then you see good ideas that pop up in your mind as a result of the work of your unconscious. Yeah. So creative process in your head is done 90% uh, by your unconscious. And then we come up and say... Well, I came up with this great idea. <laughs> yeah, but it's what Bono from U2, he said, uh, do not interfere with the pen, yes. let the pen do its work. Exactly, yes. The moment we start really thinking about things, uh, thinking about um, what kind of uh, result we need to come up with, we yeah. are limiting the thinking process of our minds because the thinking process is actually uh, an unconscious uh, process. So what you should do is actually, what helps is... We call it task switching. So yeah. first step is to go gather the information that you need because you yes. need to kind of know. To be able to combine old information, you need to have old information, uh, yes. right? Yes. So you need to go and learn about it, Google about it, talk to people. So you have some kind of baggage. And then what you don't do is sit down and think hard about it. No, you let it go because it has to come down to your unconscious. Yeah. You go meet up with your friends, go take a shower, or go walk, do absolutely something else yeah. so that you're not busy with it and thinking about it, so that you give time to your unconscious to do its work. Well, do the let the pen do its work, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then afterwards, bring yourself to a state where you can... Um, it's kind of like facilitating the right environment so that you can harvest the result of your unconscious. Yeah, I think this happens a lot with musicians, especially when they're young. They just play and play because you yes. have to put it in there. Uh -huh. So they've got the, the capability to write music and the knowledge about it. And uh, as they are in such a relaxed state, they just start jamming stuff yeah. and then songs pop up automatically. Yeah, yeah. yes. So there is there are there are different levels of putting yourself in the right state of course. Yes. Uh what I just named uh, gather the knowledge. So mm -hmm. if you don't know anything then it would be hard to combine all that knowledge. So that's the first step. That's the first one. step. Okay. Step 1. Um learn about it. Do your homework. Yeah. So you cannot just pop it out of nowhere. True. Um it's like running a marathon. So you can't just uh you know show up somewhere with the even if you have the right fitness level if you don't know how to go about a marathon you won't be able to do it. So yes. You need to know how to put your foot down, how to run, what to eat and to drink. So the information, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the second step is to bring your... Now, let's go with a marathon example. You have to bring your body to a fitness level in which it can, in theory, 
run a marathon. Yeah. So um, that is a process that is prior to the day of the marathon. So you do this systematically. Um, with creativity, it's the same thing. Your body and your mind, the fitness level is very close to each other. So yeah. um, you cannot expect somebody who's very tired at 10 o'clock after a very long day, um, having, not having slept for the whole week to come up with the best idea. You have to take care of your body and your mind. You need to sleep well. You need to... Um, uh, eat well, you really, you know, be careful with your nutrition and do nice things, feed your soul. So actually the basics to keep yeah. yourself as a person healthy. Um, and then you bring yourself to a fitness level. That's what uh, uh, one of the most famous Dutch comedians, Hans Tewen, he yeah. once said in an interview, I do not know how I come up with ideas. I just know I have to sleep well. Yeah. And then they present themselves. Well, that's, well, he's very reflective then, you know, the introspection. So he can, you know, take good care of yourself so you bring yourself to the right fitness level. Yeah, and that's also what in companies people forget because I see people being so tired, eating the yes. wrong food, yes. and then they expect themselves to come up with new ideas. Exactly, and yeah. working too hard. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. They're asked to actually work over hours and actually think about stuff at night when they're at home because then for the next day they'll be, you know, prepared and everything. But that is that is just exactly the opposite of what you should do. You should actually yeah. leave it and then do something nice for yourself. And then when you come back, there's so much space yes. to to receive all that, you know, goodness from your from your uh, unconscious. Yeah, I, I hear a lot of entrepreneurs say like um, when I go out for a weekend or when I'm on holiday, yeah. that's when the good ideas exactly. present themselves. Under the shower, maybe or yeah. Know. Yeah. True. Well, so, provided that you've done your homework. So this doesn't come out of nowhere. True. This comes out of your unconscious that already has gathered the information. So let's not also forget that. People yeah. who just take showers and go for walks, <laughs> no, you know what I mean? No, <laughs> but it's like expecting someone who hasn't played the guitar ever to come to, up with a great song. Because he has slept well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no. That so happen. the first step is do your homework, get the knowledge. Yes. First two is be f the fitness Yes, fitness, and that's not only your your um, uh, you know f uh, nutrition and sleeping and everything, but also practicing um, the exact task where yes. you want to be good at. Yes. So the, the rule of thumb is um, the the activity that you do regularly, you get better at it. So you cannot expect yourself to be the very best or perfect yeah totally perfect the yeah. first time you do it so you need to make mistakes yes and and i'm, I'm not saying you can make mistakes this is, a, this is a different you need to make mistakes yeah because yeah. by by doing uh you also come up with or you see what doesn't work and what does work and that is that also delivers new information and you I use that information to combine in new ways so people say yeah but i don't know enough and i ha i'm not really fit yet i don't know so i'm gonna wait until i'm totally there that's wrong you just you just got to go out and do oh, that, it that's great they did research that the two groups of people they had to come up with uh, i thought it was a design for something yeah and the one was just give me the best design possible yeah and the other one is just make as many designs as you yes. want oh and I know. yeah that group comes up with way much more creative designs yes. than the first group because they were allowed to make mistakes. Yes, because by thinking we can simulate a lot of things. Yes, but what we cannot simulate is the is the mistakes that you make, which uh, deliver actually the best insights. So yes. what happens when you do something and make a mistake? Um, your brain codes it in a different way. Uh, when experiences are paired with emotional response, yeah. and if it's a uh, if it's a negative response, which in this case, if you make a mistake, mm -hmm. you, you think, oh, no, and, uh, and, and, and you made a mistake, it's a failure. So it's a negative experience and an um, emotion. Yeah. Your brain codes it in an alarm uh, box mm -hmm. and um, you will not forget it. You know, you make a mistake and two years later, you know exactly which uh, wrong word you said in a conversation or whatever. So that's very easy to remember and learn from. That's why the, the brain remembers things that have a high emotional connection. Exactly. That's why everyone... You said it in a better way now. <laughs> yes, yeah, but everyone exactly. remembers where they were at 9-11, for instance, because it's a huge emotion yes. and your brain connects that memory. It also get, it, it gets branded in your head. You cannot even forget it if 
you yeah, wanted yeah. to. Yeah, oh, great, yeah. great. So yes. we had first uh, knowledge, step knowledge, fitness, and what's step three? Step three is what you do immediately before you do the performance. Now, going back to the marathon example, yeah. Imagine you've um, you've gathered all the information that you need to know, and you've also had a great training uh, program, mm -hmm. and the day has come, right? Yeah. You're fit, and on paper, you could be able to, you know, run this marathon. And you wake up in the morning, and you say, well, you know what? I'm going to go run 15 kilometers first. Yeah. And you do that, and you're, you know, half exhausted, and you say, I'm also hungry, so I'm also going to have two large pizzas and two buckets of Coke. <laughs> yeah. And then you show up at 10 o'clock at the marathon <laughs> place. Um, well, nothing has changed about knowledge and fitness, but the state that you're in at that moment, yeah. I mean, when I tell you this, you even laugh. This is so ridiculous. This is not something you would do, right? Yeah. I mean, this um, has the biggest effect on your performance. You're not going to be able to run, let alone a marathon. I mm -hmm. mean, you won't be able to run the block. Yeah. So what we do with creativity is we think, well... You know, I've done all my homework and, you know, I've been practicing. I, I, I am healthy and everything. But then we don't really think about our brain state. Yeah. So, we, I, you know, with a marathon, you have your body state mm -hmm. and how you are. And now what is brain state? Yeah. Um, well, this has to do... Uh, actually, we know this without knowing uh, the, the term brain state. Yeah, everyone so, recognizes it. Exactly. Yeah. Imagine that um, you're in love. Mm -hmm. And you're jumping around and you're very happy and um, and you look around you and you, you notice the beautiful flowers and in your car, every music that you hear makes sense yeah. and, and you see connections that you've never seen before. Whereas you, you don't have more knowledge, but all of a sudden you realize that there's more in the world. So yes. this is a different brain state because mm -hmm. your perception of the world is different. Mm -hmm. and and which state is this? <laughs> this is this is the stupid state that you become, <laughs> that you become blind to everything. Else. <laughs> True. Well, I can say that this is a very highly creative state because you see a lot of connections that you were not able to see before. So you, this we recognize. This is a brain state, right? This is not just bodily state, but this is how your mind is, the environment of your mind. Yes. Imagine that you wake up in the morning and you're still in bed. Your eyes are still closed. And, um, well, you don't really feel your body yet. You, well, you know that it's there, but you don't really move it. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of half asleep, but half awake. So you're aware of sounds around you. But it's kind of that state where the thoughts in your head are kind of fluid. Yes. So they don't really have shape or form. And you cannot really think about the appointments of the day, but you have a sense of how you feel, who you are, something like that. So that is a state where it's very calm in your head. Yes. And ideas just roll. That is also a very creative state. So the activity that you do prior to that state yes. has the biggest influence on that state. So to summarize point one, that was? Uh, do your homework by n gathering information. Okay. Know your stuff. Point two. Bring yourself to the fitness level yeah. prior to um, the day of All the right. performance. And step three? Bring yourself to the brain state yes. that is appropriate to your goal. Thanks very much. We'll do another one. Sure. This was, was about creativity. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. I like it. See you the next Thank one.